You are listening to The Simple Truth, an LL Canada podcast. We hope this message will bring transformation, not just information, and encourage and challenge you into a deeper relationship with Jesus. What is gentleness? Yeah. We're going to jump into this topic of gentleness yeah. as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's actually uh, something that's important to not only a fruit of the Spirit, but it's if the Spirit is part of the Trinity, which is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, then this is a characteristic of God. Yes. And this is really important for people to understand. This is part of his heart toward us. And so I think it's important to explore. Well, it's an interesting thing to think that God is... Uh, the Almighty One. There's nobody more mm. powerful than Him. There's no one yes. more holy and pure and just. So when He sees the the um, atrocities done to His children in the forms of abuse and exploitation mm. and the anger that can come out of Him, like when Jesus saw the poor being exploited in the temple and He made a court of whips and He yeah. drove he them angry. out of the temple. Yes. Really angry. How does how do you understand or how do we understand mm. That he's gentle, yeah, but he can also be that angry over injustice. Yeah. So here's this, this is, is good. It. This no, is it's, really good. Well, to it's unpick. tough. We don't have all the but answers But actually, yet. can I can I just yeah. share kind of a bit of a definition so that we understand uh, maybe just a little bit broader what gentleness is? And so it's defined as a quality of being kind, tender, or mild mannered. So think about that and think about what you learned about. God's nature and what affected you because a lot of people would not say oh God is kind-hearted or kind nature and yet it's one of his his fruits it's something that's coming out of who he is that's totally true yes that's totally true yeah I, I think gentle is hard to understand mm. in terms of um how is God is gentle with us in what ways? Mm. That he is, he's long suffering. He is he's long suffering. To get I angry. know that. <laughs> he, he is patient with us. Yeah. Now we're going to, of course, if you're thinking fruit of the spirit, you think of love, joy, patience. Some yeah, of these things are already in here. All that. Don't worry, we're getting there. But there, there's <laughs> some overlap. Yeah. Um, and may, I hope that doesn't take away from the clarity, but uh, one of the things yeah. that, that you picked up as we were looking at this, is this really just came out strong. Do you want to tell us about that? And this is kind of the whole idea of understanding that, you know, we can have an expectation of Father God kind of with what the expectation was in our home. And we meet a lot of people who have really broken um, understanding about this whole idea of gentleness because they didn't experience totally it true. in their life. They didn't experience it in their upbringing. You know, their mom and their dad may have been harsh and, and strict and brutal in, in many ways. And so, you know, one of the characteristics of the spirit is this whole idea of being gentle. And yet, you know, put that in the context of, of discipline it's, it's hard to understand because a lot of people have experienced that they've had an angry, harsh father or yes. a disappointed in them father or, and, and yet the father part of God is that there's a gentleness in how he wants to respond to us. And even in correction, I don't know, um, as I'm growing in the Lord, I have found, of course, I get corrected lots I make lots of mistakes and so you know when I bump into those mistakes I find that you know I, I run to the Lord and I'm like Lord I I you know I made a, a mistake and and there's correction that's needed but I've never ever found that he's angry with me when I come to him he's actually the word I would use is he's kind he is. He's very gentle. Now, if I don't come to him and, you know, I kind of run away from it and don't take right responsibility for it, I'm not going to experience that relationship. But but I've really began to learn to come to him when I'm in pain and come to him when I've made a mistake. And actually what I found out is he's not near like he's not hard on me. He we might need to correct a few things, but his gentleness surprises me every time I'm like. You, you you shouldn't love me like this. You shouldn't have grace for me like this. Like I messed up and he's like, but I love you. Mm. And there's a gentle, um, even a, a rebuke. Sometimes the Lord can rebuke us 
but I, I find that he never rebukes in a harsh way, which is really different than what I experienced in, in, in life. And, uh, you know, I was used to, you know, you do something wrong, you get yelled at, right? So it's interesting to see this whole idea of letting God teach us about his heart of gentleness. It's really beautiful. Well, I think one of the things we don't often hear is I was raised in a military family. Right. And I was gently corrected when I needed or, you know, like, yeah, right. or, or I was, uh, you know, my mom or dad, my mom was a Marine or my mom was, sure. a, you know, like we hear lots of stories of parents that weren't gentle. And so it's hard for us to understand gentleness personally, if yeah, that was your experience. Yeah, yeah. And, and yet, as we looked at this issue of gentleness, as we were talking about with it, then there's also the issue of not just God gentle towards us. It is a character of God, mm. but the fruit of the Holy Spirit manifests in, in us. It's us being gentle towards him. Mm. Now, Can you unpack that a little bit? Well, because I think a better word maybe for gentle toward is actually the word of humility. Mm, right. But we also talked about the word meekness. Right. And immediately I remember, or we remembered the uh, Matthew chapter five, yeah. verse five, where Jesus said, blessed are the meek mm. for they will inherit the earth. And mm. you've all heard it probably that meekness isn't weakness. <laughs> I like that. That's going to be a uh, new saying. Uh, it's not meekness our, is not weakness. It's not our term in any ways. It's been, I don't know who coined it. It's been no, used it's in the really church funny. for years. You like that? <laughs> meekness isn't weakness. Uh, but it's actually how you use your strength yeah. in a way towards other people. And in this case, uh, when we are tender towards mm. God, if gentleness is tenderness, mm. when we're tender towards God, we're mm -hmm. actually tender to his correction. So he doesn't yes. need to be harsh or angry right. with you so, or with me. Right. So we're talking about a tender heart right yes. now. Yeah. And so taking that tender heart to him and saying, I messed up or I'm hurting. And the response back is, is love. Mm -hmm. Undeserved love. Yes. Yeah. It's really incredible. So it's, you know, I think one of the things that we often forget that in the world, the really one of the characteristics that Satan's signature is pride. Mm. We don't unpack it much on the program. It's, it's in a sense, it's so common and it shows up in so many different shapes and sizes mm -hmm. that it can really sabotage in a, in a lot of ways. But the opposite, and probably you're remembering that, you know, pride comes before a fall, it says in Proverbs, definitely. Mm. But the opposite of pride is humility. Mm. And, and that humble heart always welcomes the kingdom of heaven. So when, when Jesus said, blessed are the meek, mm. for they'll inherit the kingdom of heaven, that, that, they're, that he's talking about, these are the, these are the people with mm. the heart attitude that are really going to welcome the rule and the reign of Christ mm. is those who, who practice this meekness, this, yeah. this tenderness yeah. towards the things of God. There's this incredible verse in Matthew 11. It's one of my favorites and I use it quite often because um, well, I'll talk about it in a minute. I'll read it first. It says, um, Matthew, uh, it's 11, 29. Well, first of all, 11, 28 says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And 29 says this, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so there's something about, you know, this, this particular passage that is so familiar to us. But to unpack it, you know, we often carry heavy burdens, right? God doesn't put those heavy burdens on us. It's usually like a lie or a, a wounded place in us or a belief system that believes we should be carrying this heavy thing. And, and, and God is saying, no, no, come to me when you're tired and you're burdened, I will give you rest. So peace, you know, rest isn't just like sleeping in bed, but it can be a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and he's saying, take my yoke. And I always just imagine, you know, like the cattle used to wear these yokes and they pull together. And so it's a really, you know, the old fashioned yokes. That the you old see. wooden yeah, okay. Yeah. And I always imagine myself with the Lord in this, where he says, you know, get away from that yoke that the enemy wants to put on you, that yoke of heaviness, that yoke of harshness, that yoke of, well, just lies and, and come to me. And I want to like yoke myself with you. In other words, I want to pull. If you think about what yoke, a yoke does, it helps the two oxen or the cows or whatever pull together in unity. You go somewhere. 
And so it's like the Lord in his kindness is saying, I know you can't do it alone and I'm here to be your strength, but I'm not going to just do it for you. I'm going to include you in it. And I love this whole idea that, you know, I'm gentle, I'm humble in heart. And it reminds me of some of the scripture in Isaiah and Psalms, which says a bruised reed, I won't, gr- I won't crush. In other words, yes. he's not out to hurt us or to wound us. And we are wounded people, but he is saying, no, I'm actually gentle and I'm humble and you'll find rest for your souls, which is your mind, your will and your emotions. And so I love it because he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so in other words, the yokes that the enemy puts us on us or the wounding puts on us or sin puts on us, it's heavy. Those are heavy, heavy yokes. This one is transformative and it's kind and it's gentleness and it's inclusiveness. It's really, really exciting to walk with the spirit this way and to understand when he is saying this in the scripture that he's representing a gentle side, a loving, caring father. It's really neat. Yeah, and I think he's inviting us to have a gentle response to him then. Like God mm. wants to be gentle with us or tender, mm. and he wants us to be tender with him. So in other words, when the yes. Holy Spirit comes to talk to us, if if our heart's attitude is, yes, Lord, what, mm. you know, what is it you're saying to me? What do you want? Yeah. Um, that's different than being more, uh, what, harsh. And, and I'll be honest. Rigid. Yeah, rigid. Rigid. It's difficult to be tender hmm. when you've been hurt by someone. Hmm. It's easier to be harsh with someone who's hurt you than ah, to be tender with someone who's hurt you. Now, very good. If, you, if you watch this in the world in which we're living in, this will probably come up again when we're talking about kindness. Mm. There's a lot of harshness floating around Ooh. in the media, Ooh. on the internet, even like we've lost our ability to even be uh, humble mm. and honorable mm-hmm. and honor those in leadership. We've mm. lost that. It's mm. it's just like yeah. rip and ridicule and, and harshness on almost every front and especially mm. online. Like, to Ooh. tell people off online seems to be some sort of entitlement, and it's crept into the church as well. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, it's like the, a mob lynching. Well, I'm thinking you can be publicly lynched online nowadays. Absolutely, yeah. but isn't there a, a passage in in Proverbs that says a gentle answer turns mm-hmm. away wrath? Hmm. That's really good. So gentleness is not just an invitation from the Lord, but now it can be a strategic key to mm-hmm. open someone else's heart, not manipulate. Yeah but to create an environment where they feel safe to open up with you. So here's the thing about that. I love what you just said about, you know, uh, you know, it can turn away wrath. That's not natural in us. And and I think this is what we want to really point out as we look at the fruit of the spirits and all the different, the characteristics and the nature of them is does not come naturally. We have to ask for it. And so, you know, Lord, teach me to have a gentle, tender heart like yours teach me because it's not natural for me. Naturally, if somebody is, is, you know, slamming my name or, you know, doing, saying things about me that aren't true. Oh my goodness. Like in the natural, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to want to defend myself. And it would be really hard to do what you just said. Well, it gets harder if it's personal. Oh yeah, absolutely. If, if it's not just something you don't like, but something that's hurt you. And I, I, I do think we can see Jesus being, um, very angry and, mm. and driving the money changers mm-hmm. out of the temple because they were exploiting the poor. Mm-hmm. But how was he with the poor? Oh. How was he with the leper? How was he with the woman who was caught in adultery? Compassionate. Okay, so interesting. Tender, yes. Loving, like 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 he he ran to them. He he you know kind of had relationship with them. He had time for them. So he asked the woman who was caught in adultery, mm. where are your accusers? Has no one mm. accused you? She said, no one, sir. He says, neither do I. Mm. So there's no condemnation here. That's mm. John 3, 17. Mm. But he actually says, go and leave your life of sin. So he he says the loving thing mm. in a gentle way to still save the woman, but yeah. not to crush her when she's vulnerable. Yeah. Boy, what a difficult thing, especially when you're staring at 
the mess of someone's sin. Now, it can mm -hmm. be your own sin. You can be harsh with yourself. Mm. Oh, can we not? Yeah, right. we sure can. Yes, but you can also be harsh with other people. Yeah, I think this whole idea of God's hum like God has a humble heart. I think sometimes when he humbles us or when we've been humbled, this creates an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to teach us about his gentleness and that he like like the scriptures say he doesn't come to crush us um, or condemn us but he's inviting us into something that is transformative i really love it when he transforms my life because it's so clearly not who i normally am anything that is of holy spirit i give credit to the holy spirit and and you know that's ex that's an exciting way to live it's exciting to see the different fruits that we're going to be talking about over the next weeks start to transform in your life. So I know you talked about um, self-control last week and, you know, it's something that, you know, a couple of us on team, we've been chatting and saying, we're starting to ask, we want more self-control, like, like to specifically go through the different fruits and say, Lord, would you develop that in my life? I've never even thought to ask about it. I've never even thought to inquire and say, can you produce that? I've kind of just hoped it happened, but it's not my nature. It's not my carnal nature to have those gifts. It's something that God does in my heart. But I think this is also, it brings us back to that place where when we recognize, I don't have what's required here. Right. If I'm being harsh, personally, I've been harsh mm. many times, mm. too many times. Uh, here at home with Karen, with, you know, three daughters, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes even in, in work over the years. And it, it needs to be brought to my attention to be mm -hmm. to be tender. And hopefully I've been repentant in those mm -hmm. situations. You can I can develop a tenderness if mm -hmm. I have help. That's where it's brought to my attention. That's the right. help I need. But also sometimes asking God and saying, well, I don't I don't have the perspective or I don't have the understanding to generate yeah. my own tenderness towards this situation, this person, mm -hmm. but I want to. Mm -hmm. Would you give me your tenderness? And tenderness isn't weakness. Right. It's actually strength under the right kind of control. It's fin I love that. Yeah. Controlled strength. Because people need your strength. Yeah. But they don't need your strength with a hammer. Sometimes they need your strength with a lift. Right. And sometimes like our emotions <clears throat> get so involved. I don't know what you're talking okay. about. <laughs> okay. Uh, we get emotional or angry or triggered and we respond out of our emotion. React. And, right. And, and not a lot of good fruit. It's bad fruit comes out of our life. And then we regret it and say, oh, Lord, we're so sorry that we said that thing. How many times have I regretted something I've said and thought, if I had just waited 10 seconds and just kind of took time to pause and not say the first thing that comes out of my mouth, I probably would have been a little wiser. Or even ask the question, why am I not tender in this mm. moment? Mm. Why am I freaking out mm -hmm. and not tender? Mm -hmm. Well, there's lots of reasons. It can mm -hmm. be wounding. Mm -hmm. It can be, yes, there's bad habits and things we shouldn't do and, and all those kind of things, but there's reasons yeah. behind that. Yeah. And then I think that's the heart of God too. Yes. You know, we're trying mm -hmm. to encourage you to, to go to him and start. I love that idea of ask him why. Ask him, where did that come from? Why do I react that way? Is that just me? Is that just my personality and I kind of fly off the handle? Or is it something that God wants to talk to me about? And this kind of goes into a whole nother idea about lordship. You know, what does it look like to, to give, you know, not just salvation, but Jesus Lord to speak in, to make him Lord of all of my life. And, yes. and this would be my emotions and my reactions, Lord of how I react and how I behave. And to invite his spirit to transform us, to, to live by the spirit, not by the rules of the book, but the, the heart behind what the Lord's instructing us to do. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're talking about this and leaving a tension for you to sort out mm. without easy answers. What does it mean to be strong, mm. fierce, um, even a warrior after God's heart and tender? Yeah. Uh, meek. Yeah. Humble. I mean, the, this is, that, that may be something to chew on there for you. I know it is for me. Mm. And um, sometimes we need the people around us 
to help us see mm -hmm. when we're not tender because we don't we don't realize it mm -hmm. or sometimes we're not tender enough for a specific search situation mm -hmm. and uh, i know that when god brings his healing the more broken the person the more um tenderness is I, often needed i know not not all the time but yeah. it, at strategic points that tenderness is needed to create the safety for them oh, to open up to heal. It's and, been and, such yeah. it's such a privilege to be in the ministry room with. I mean, not only having having received some of that tenderness myself from the Lord, but being able to be what we call almost like the surgery room, where somebody is having a heart surgery, you know, with the Lord because of some deep wounding they've had, and to just watch the love and the tenderness and the compassion. We got to experience that even this week yes, um, with God's affirmation, you know, that God is speaking and affirming, you know, somebody who's so precious to him. And to be part of that, honestly, it's probably one of the greatest privileges um, as a human you can have to just watch God do what he does, to watch him speak, to watch him impact somebody's life is very exciting. Yeah, I think one heads up that we would like for you to think about is that because God's enemy is not tender, mm. there's actually a war or a fight on against you being tender, mm. which means through circumstances, you can not only fail to respond the way God would want you to respond, mm. and don't worry, there's grace for that. Mm. The key is being tender to, to see it or to let somebody else help you see it. But we can also... Uh, aside from failing to be tender, we can lose the tenderness we once had. So we can fail mm -hmm. or, in a sense, lose the tenderness we once had with our spouse. Maybe something they've done has hurt, have hurt us. We can lose the tenderness mm -hmm. we once had with our children when mm -hmm. we're getting exasperated. We can lose the tenderness mm -hmm. we once had with an, a neighbor who doesn't do things the way we think they should. Or maybe they've actually done something to harm us. Mm -hmm. The hard thing is, is we can be tender in moments, but lose it and... We actually need God's help, not just to bring the fruit of the Spirit into our lives, but to bring His awareness mm. of are we um, responding and, and loving one another with the tenderness that's reflective of His heart. Mm. And so, no easy answers there. More of an ongoing wrestle, I think, we're presenting tonight, yeah, would you say? for sure. But I think it's exciting to be able to kind of take a look at them, a deeper look at the different characteristics of this, these fruits, you know, that we're pretty familiar with, I think, as believers and to really welcome God into teaching us about it. I mm -hmm. think there's always more opportunity as believers to grow and to learn. We're learning more all the time. And I, I just think that, you know, it, it, you have to have that humbled heart, humble, tender heart to, to allow God to do this kind of speaking. I remember back in the 90s, there was a um, Promise Keepers mm. event I went to. One of the speakers was a guy named Stu Weber. Mm. And I think he's an ex-Marine, an ex-football mm. player. And he wrote a book called Tender Warrior. Mm. Really spoke to the heart of a man on how do you use your strength to tenderly serve those around you. Mm. A really, um, it was a really impactful book for me to explain this this tension of being strength, yeah, as a man, but using your too. strength tenderly to help people. Mm, and I wouldn't say I got good. it all, but it certainly opened my eyes and, and was very helpful yeah, at the time. Yeah. Well, maybe we could pray with you. I'd love to pray with you and just uh, invite the Lord to come and teach us all a little bit more about his gentleness. So just before Karen prays, here's a question to ask as we go to prayer. Father, who is in my life that you want to pour tenderness into me to touch with your tenderness through me. Go ahead. Father, I just want to thank you for the fruit of your spirit. It's gentleness. And that's a characteristic of you, your father's heart. And so we want to invite you to teach us how to be gentle. And Lord, we ask that where we haven't been gentle, where we haven't expressed that kind of fruit, you would forgive us, Lord for the times we've been harsh and rigid and unmovable and maybe proud. Father, we just want to give you our heart today and say we're sorry. We're really sorry, Father. Would you forgive us for the hardness of the heart that, that has expressed itself in a lack of gentleness? Lord, whether it's been to our family or our children, 
whether it's been in regards to the church, leaders, people in our midst and in relationship with us. We ask, Father, that you would bring healing to those places. And we, we long to experience more of your freedom and more of your spirit. So we invite you to teach us about this fruit of gentleness. We want to receive it, first of all, mm -hmm. from you. So God, in, in the areas of my life where I'm in need of your gentle touch, your gentle word, your, your gentle kindness, Lord, we ask, Father, that you would help us to experience that with you this week, that you would help us to understand that your heart is gentle toward us. And, and so, Father, we just welcome you to speak to us, whether it be through the word of God, whether it be just when we're walking outside that you would speak to us spirit to spirit. And we just pray, Father, that you'd be ministering in this way all through the week as, as we just long to learn more from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining this episode of The Simple Truth. Visit LLCanadaCourses.com for more information about LL Canada and the resources we offer.